Serbia Wonderland Festival. So Beltec, this is the second time you're actually playing Serbia. Yeah. So how was it this time around? Well, it was amazing. I just came off the stage like five minutes ago. So uh, it was actually the best gig I've ever done in Serbia or Belgrade. So really, really amazing. I cannot say anymore. So. Are you happy with your set? Because the crowd was going crazy. Yeah, actually I was really surprised uh, because it threw a lot of new stuff. I had some tracks to test out and it was a really good response. I also videotaped it, so I'll post it on. And uh, I also tried some drum and bass songs, which was like a really huge surprise, I guess, for the crowd, but they enjoyed it, I guess. Now, do you find that, um, that you would like to experiment with your sound? Because you have a very diverse sound. Yeah. as it is so do you like to sort of uh, like for example drum and bass do you think you would consider producing drum and bass definitely i already produced some break big songs but uh they're not like really ready for release but i'm trying to produce whatever i like you know so let's say from techno house drum and bass trance even i produced uh, back in the day some progressive house progressive trance tracks so it all depends on my emotions, my mood, you know. I just love the music, so I think that's the main point. Well, it's interesting when we uh, when you when we check you out on Beatport, you yeah. have uh, like six genres that you're under. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry to be like not the constant guy, like uh, just make all the same songs, but that's me. I hate that. I hate it uh, to reproduce my songs like in the same way. I always try to do it in another way, so. It's maybe confusing for some guys, but uh, I think in general it just matters that if it's good, it's good, you know, that's it. You do a lot of mashups as well, which yeah. I've noticed. Um, uh, is that something that you do on the spot or do you create them before and then... Uh... Actually, I create it like on the spot and before. So, yeah, it just depends. Like, I have a lot of tracks that I play live and they're like just in inserts for like, I don't know, 30 seconds, one minute, so it's kind of live mashup. But sometimes, like really complex mashups, I also do at home or in studio, of course, and also add some samples on it so it makes like a really rich edit. It's not just like mixing two tracks, the mashup, but kind of more. Now you've done uh, quite a few remixes as well. How do you choose what track to remix? Uh, actually, I just look for a track that I really like. So uh, basically, it's just like. The guy sends me his track or a label or whatever, just reaches out to my management team and they forward it to me. So I check all the tracks and if I like something or hear like a really good idea out of it, I definitely take it. So it's a really simple like that. Now you're from Slovenia yeah. and we know a very famous DJ from Slovenia called Umek, of yeah, course. Yeah. And you guys have done tracks together, you've, uh, you've done tours together, I've seen you in Novi Sad playing together a few years ago. Um, what's it like working with somebody as talented as Umek? Well, actually it was, well, it was a big honor because Umek is of course one of the legends in my country and is still like a really successful DJ all around the world. So uh, it was really interesting for me because he comes from like underground music and I'm, I would say, more like in mainstream music. So combine our two worlds was really funny and really a huge experience so and just take all of his knowledge and i also brought some of my tricks so it was really nice to see like an old school guy combining with new school you know something like that so it was really fun he's really a great guy so it's a privilege to work with him yeah. who are some of the producers that inspired you to be a producer and a dj uh, actually one of the biggest inspirations uh, was liam howlett the producer of prodigy group so uh, when I first heard their tracks, it was like immediately fall in love with like the sounds which are really like inventive because at that time, like in the 90s, there were a lot of like Euro dance and some kind of that kind of stuff. So it all sounded a bit the same. They were really good tracks, like a lot of vocals and stuff. But Prodigy had that unique signature, like really uh, new sounds. So I checked the guy out and uh, this was actually my first concert in my life. I checked out Prodigy on 98 uh, in some Tivoli Hall, like in Slovenia, and it was amazing. I was 14 years old and I just didn't know what happened, like it blew my mind. So from that point on, it was like, I don't know, the biggest, the biggest dream to become a producer and start to make my own track, so here I am. <laughs> you have a lot of big gigs coming up and you've played a lot of big festivals. 
Do you get nervous playing in front of a huge crowd? Well, maybe sometimes there are some gigs that you uh, get really nervous, but that's just like because you haven't done it before. Like for example, when I did my first ultra music festival, it was like really huge deal for me, you know. So I was really nervous, really prepared in my head what I'm gonna play or what the crowd's gonna be, and then it went just completely different. So it's all about, I don't know, what emotions you get behind the decks and you just choose your tracks wisely and try to create the best vibe possible. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer playing festivals or clubs? Well, I still prefer festivals. <laughs> I'm like a festival guy, I love that, uh, and, uh, but I also love clubs, especially when it's a really good club with a good sound system. That's for me the best because uh, I can really interact with the crowd, uh, they're really close to you, you know, So uh, because in the festival it's really hard to just get to the public, and be with them, like share the love, it's, it's really hard. But here is really good because they had like an extra extended stage, so you could definitely walk through, so it was cool. So what's your favorite club to play in the world? You would have seen a few. Impossible, I'm sorry. Impossible, Impossible yeah. <laughs> there are so many great clubs all around the world, you name it, like, I don't know, from America, Europe, Asia, whatever. I haven't yet been in Australia, so I can't comment from Australia. Well, generally, Electro Big Room has really exploded over the last couple of years. Uh, do you think that you know this is something that's going to keep going, or is it something that might die down in a while? I would say it's really it's really changed all across the globe because, like for example, here in Slovenia, the Balkan region also, or some even the southern countries are not so much into that music yet because it's so new to them. Like for example, this festival is really new and it's kind of bringing the younger crowd in, which is really cool. Uh, so they're liking this music more and more, you know. So I think here it will burst more and more, like a prize. But in the States, or especially in Europe, it's not so popular, I would say. It's more like an extra genre, but I'm talking about big room, like hard style, maybe mixed tracks. But tracks with huge melodies, really emotional tracks, will last forever. That's yeah. Well, it's been great having you. Thank you so much for being part of the festival again. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. Wonderland.